Hi everyone, my name is Morgan. This is my channel Pisces Paperbacks. I just posted a video on Friday that is my review of Midnight Sun. I will link to that, but I will talk about Midnight Sun in this video. But I just want to say that I filmed that video like <laughs> weeks ago and just finally like found the motivation to post it. You might have noticed I took a leave of absence during August. It wasn't on purpose, but I wasn't really reading. Midnight Sun I read the first four days in, within the first week of August and then I didn't read anything until like maybe the last five days of August so most of the month I wasn't reading part of that is just I wasn't I wasn't feeling it I haven't really been motivated to be reading I mean now I I've actually been going through a really good streak the past like week two weeks so I'm really happy about that but this month last month I just wasn't feeling it plus I got a job, um, not like a real job, I mean it's a real job, I'm making money, but it's not like a job in my field, it's not like a professional job. Um, I'm working at a garden center near my house and I'm actually really enjoying it. I've been working a lot and I get maybe, maybe, I don't like say one or two days off every week um, is like, yeah, everybody gets one or two days off in a week, but I had Friday off and before Friday I worked nine days in a row, so it's kind of like that kind of scheduling so that was a really long thing I hope everybody's been doing okay if you've read any really good books in the past month that you want to talk about please let me know in the comments below but right now I'm gonna dive into the five books I read in August so like I said a little bit ago the first book I read in August was Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer um, five fucking stars I love this book so much. I posted an hour-long kind of discussion review video that I made with one of my really good friends, Tatiana. She also loves Twilight like a lot and she's also Team Edward and she's really really cool and I highly recommend you check her channel out. Midnight Sun is Twilight from Edward's perspective. It's so good. It's so good. It's everything I wanted. I love it so much. It makes me like so happy inside and I gave it five stars. It's so fucking long though. It's like 662 pages this copy is and it's incredible. I love it so much. It's probably my favorite Twilight book now. It's probably the, gonna be a book that I reread like a lot going into the, my, the rest of my life so you know I still hate the cover but I love Edward and I love this book so I can't complain too much. The next book I read was The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. I actually started reading this book in July during the reading rush. I believe I like listened to it for like 20 minutes while I was going on a walk and like that's as far as I got in before I was like meh time for a break from reading. I picked this book up later in the month in August and I loved it. I loved it so much. So The Dreamers is it's about a, an epidemic, um, which is a little hard to read right now for some people, so keep that in mind if you're interested in the plot. It might be a good one to like wait to read until this is a little bit more distant of a memory, but I picked it to read specifically because I wanted to read it during a pandemic. I don't know. Something about that appealed to me. I don't know. The Dreamers is about a small California college town where a girl falls asleep, sleeps for 60 hours, and then dies. And this sleeping epidemic, this sleeping this sickness kind of makes it, it just takes this town by storm. There's not like one central main character. The book follows a lot of different characters and it kind of is one of those books where all of the different perspectives come together to form this like one unifying picture of the entire event. And I think this book was really focused on painting a picture of humanity and how people would really deal with the emotional, the physical, the psychological consequences of something like this happening, um, spiritual consequences, stuff like that. And I think it really captured humanity in its highs and lows very well, but also in that kind of heartwarming sort of way that books and movies do that. I really, really love this book. I think I gave it a four and a half or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, my spreadsheet says I gave it a four and a half but it's really it's probably a favorite um if you hear anything my grandpa just got here we're having um an early dinner together so I will hurry up the rest of this video Elsa Elsa 
The next book I read in August was Between the World and Me by ta -Nehisi Coates. This is a non-fiction almost memoir. It's written formatted in a letter to his son and basically it's an account of the author kind of trying to understand how he grew into who he is as a black man in the world that we live in in America and what he hopes for his son but how he knows that the world won't be kind to his son and like the experiences that kind of built his understanding of, of race in America. I thought it was it was fantastic. It was incredibly well written. It was incredibly touching and it really is I think something that a lot of people should read. I swear to God Elsa what the fuck was that? Anyway I really enjoyed reading it and I gave it five stars. Next I read In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado I believe her name is. Um, this is a memoir and it is not a memoir of the author's entire life but it is a memoir of the author as she enters experiences and then exits an abusive relationship with her first girlfriend and it's kind of mostly focused on addressing obviously her experience but also talking about the ways abuse is hidden in queer relationships and queer communities because it's often seen so much as something that a man does to a woman uh, in domestic violence situations or domestic abuse situations. If you are interested in reading this book, which I I highly recommend this book, it's it's a bit surrealist in the way that it's written. Very short chapters and a bit a, like a kaleidoscope of this relationship, the way it's formatted, and I, I really, really loved it, but definite trigger warning for verbal mental abuse psychological abuse stuff like that it was it was definitely difficult to read I kind of wish I hadn't read it while I was like at work while I listened to it while I was at work all of these besides Midnight Sun I read by audiobook because I think it really deserves a good cry I wish I could have shed some tears and not been in public while I was reading it but I really loved it and then lastly I read Medical Apartheid by Harriet Washington the full name of this book is actually Medical Apartheid the Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. This book was published in 2007, so it's not quite the present now, but it's the present up to 2006. So as you can see, I was on a bit of a non-fiction moment. I really liked this non-fiction book. I think it was incredibly well done, incredibly well researched. It is harrowing to read. Just like hit after hit of just terrible thing in every chapter. Some of it really takes your breath away because I think a lot of focus has been put on the Tus Tuskegee syphilis experiments, an aberration of ethics and human decency, but it's really part of like a long history of just medical trauma, medical abuse, and this book paints a really good picture of, not good picture, but a well done picture of like how that history, how how it became not acceptable, but how these medical abuses came to even happen, and then what were what are the consequences of that on the black community throughout generations? I think this is a really important book to read if you want to know. Like, I feel like after this summer, a lot of people have been, you know reading to improve their understanding of race in America and race in the world and how all of that interacts and I think there's a lot of people who know that racism exists but uh, they often are willfully blind to the way that that creates actual consequences. Obviously police violence and police brutality is, is an actual consequence of this but there are the people who are still like oh, you know, racism, it, it still is around today, but it's not as bad, so why can't you just forget about it and move on? And obviously I don't believe that that's completely untrue and so insensitive and awful, but um, this book really paints a picture of like, yes, racism and racist things happened a very long time ago, and yes, it's very important that we still remember them because there are consequences up to today throughout generations. It is it is just it has affected so much especially especially well this is a medical book so in the medical field so yeah it's a hate to end on a downer but those are the five books that I read let me just count to make sure that was yeah so those are the five books I read oh I didn't I don't think I rated the last two I gave in the dream house five stars I absolutely adored it like so much I can't even begin to express and then I also gave medical apartheid five stars so this was kind of like 
a downer month for a lot of the books being kind of sad but in terms of quality I would say this is one of my best months ever like I gave every book four and a half or five stars most of them got five stars and I just thoroughly not enjoyed because they're again sad or about very difficult topics I so very much valued the reading of each of these books and I'm glad that I did and I do intend to read more from all of these authors because I think that they were all exceptional works of writing. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, if you agreed or disagreed. Let me know if you're going to read any of them. All, all the good stuff and I will see you guys soon. Bye!